of you very much too. It's very encouraging to me to see so many Americans coming out who love their country and love the truth. We have a lot of good information and uh, this next uh, part of the talk is going to be some of the most difficult information. Now our prominent bloodlines of the mystery religions, they keep their power and wealth by dynastic intermarriage. They maintain as low of a profile as possible and they use fronts for legitimacy. Here are some of uh, the information on the Collins. The Rothschild family, for instance, have their own secret genealogies which go clear back to Nimrod. Now who is Nimrod? Nimrod was a great warrior and remember we talked about the power of Gnostic religions and he realized as a warrior that he could take the power of the state and combine it with the power of Gnostic religion. And you see an example of that Babylonian system during the Middle Ages where the Catholic Church was married to the state. Not all of us though can belong to one of these powerful bloodlines. So, so they have a game here that we can play so we can participate in the type of games they play. And it was kind of interesting that this game has cards that represent the different things that you are to uh, control to win the game. And these are uh, a few of the cards of the game and they are also the type of things that the Illuminati controls. Those of you who uh, want to understand this further uh, can, uh, can look at it on your own. Now the United States military has a lot of handbooks. This is a handbook for chaplains. It explains those religious groups that are recognized by the United States military. And in this book are a number of witchcraft organizations, including the Church of Satan. And in this handbook, it explains that within witchcraft, there are three degrees, which is correct. If we look at this diagram, we will see the basic structure of the secret Illuminati. Back in 1776, they structured the Illuminati with, the, with 13 positions. But around the time of the American Civil War, they restructured it somewhat so that what they created was this first level, your anarchy level here, and then a hierarchy level, and then your special committees and councils. <coughs> this is very similar to <coughs> this is, excuse me. This is very similar to what we saw on our diagram where you had your uh, Remember on your Gnostic religions where you had your broad mass religions and your initiate group. On the anarchy level, you'll find thousands of different witchcraft groups that each have their own rituals and their own beliefs, and they look disassociated and unorganized uh, and unrelated. But then if you are selected to go beyond that, you will enter the hierarchy level and as a little girl, for instance, you would be part of Sisters of Light, and then as a teenager, you'd be inducted into the Mothers of Darkness, and then you would progress to the Grandmother level. And they have many special commit <coughs> committees and councils. For instance, your council of three, five, seven, eleven, thirteen, your Grand Druid Council, your committee of three hundred, your committee of five hundred, over here, you see represented again that same pa three-tiered pattern that I was talking about. And this is the Satanic Brotherhood 
uh, which is organized in hubs. The Satanic Brotherhood and Illuminati are like this. They're essentially one organization, <clears throat> except the Illuminati is technically Gnostic dualism. They believe that your good deeds must balance your bad deeds. If you were to uh, follow the life of somebody that was um, inducted through one of the Illuminati orders, like the Order of the Skull and Bones, you'll see that they are tapped as a candidate for first year or knight and a patriarch may, and may rise to leadership within the Skull and Bones. From there, you'll see that they progress to the Council of Foreign Relations, whose equivalent is the Royal Institute of International Affairs, then to the Roundtable Groups, and then to the Pilgrim Society. The Pilgrim Society is far more powerful than Council of Foreign Relations, although very few people know about it and talk about it. And this is your OTO. Now this is a very important scripture to share with you. It says, and upon her head was written, Mystery Babylon the Great, the mother of harlots and the abominations of the earth. I'm just going to go through this as quick as I can. Babylon the Great is fallen. It's become the habitations of devils and the hold of every foul spirit. All nations have drunk of the wine of the wrath of her fornication. It goes on to talk about her slaves and how she sells the souls of men. And it says, <clears throat> By thy sorceries were all nations deceived, and in her was found the blood of the prophets and of the saints and of all that were slain upon the earth. I want to draw out two points from this. Now, the popular... Protestant interpretation of this set of scriptures is that this is referring to the Catholic Church. Ladies and gentlemen, the Catholic Church wasn't even in existence when most of the prophets, the biblical prophets, were slain. This is referring to Babylon the Great, Babylon the Mystery Religions, which is today the Illuminati. And I also point out to you that uh, there it says, all that were slain upon the earth. So God is a greater spiritualist than I am. He's laying at the feet of this one organization, the mystery religions, all the blood of all of all of these innocent people down through the years. It's very interesting when you're a researcher like myself and you go in and see how all these wars were created for the powerful elite and all of their assassination squads and everything. I have a better understanding for why God said all that were slain upon the earth are the fault of this mother of harlots. So the Catholic Church is a daughter of the harlot. We're not talking about a Jewish conspiracy. We're not talking about a Catholic conspiracy. We're talking about a conspiracy that involves all the nations of the earth. <clears throat> and in the Scottish Rites Journal of this year, they talk about the double eagle. Now, this is a logo that comes from Babylon, and many countries around the world have adopted it. And these are a few of the countries over here that have adopted it. You've got Israel and Mexico and France and Germany and Turkey and Bolivia and Chile and Honduras and Italy and another country that has adopted it that's not uh, given there is Canada. And this, real quickly, I'm going to go through the next through a few pieces of documentation very quickly. Try to hold it here for just a few uh, seconds so that they can uh, zero in on it. But it's telling us, this is, comes from the Talmud, that the Talmud comes from Babylon. And this, from the Jewish Encyclopedia, is telling us how uh, the uh, uh, Pharisees learned their beliefs